you're now you're at the buy. How much of this week do you spend on self scouting to, to try to tweak and improve the offense to, to get games started a little better, a little faster? I mean, we're going to do a lot of things, Teresa. Um, the whole goal is to try to improve mentally, um, get as physically healthy as we can, um, try to get our players to understand you know, each and every play, the details of it, first whatever they're running offensively or defensively or on special teams. And, you know, that'll, that'll be the, the key to try to improve. Which energy does it bring to a team when a, uh, when a quarterback can rattle off some runs like Ryan did yesterday, the one especially where he kind of carries a pile for the, that first down there? Again, you guys have heard me talk um, about defensively being able to defend uh, the quarterback as he runs or extends plays and, and you know, whether it's to, to, to throw the football down the field or, or to gain yards when guys are turning and running in man coverage, um, you know, it's deflating. You don't, you know, you don't necessarily practice that. I mean, there's, you know, rush lanes and when those guys get covered up or there's areas and spaces and, and guys turn and run and especially in long yardage situations um, or in two minute drills or, you know, so there's designed quarterback runs and there's ones where they extend the play. And, and I think when you, the ones you can practice are the ones that are designed and the ones that are hard are the ones that quarterbacks in this league or in any league college extend plays with their feet. Um, and then certainly his ability, uh, Ryan's ability to, to be physical, to, to get the first down and to get the two point conversion um, was really cool to see. Do you earn a little credit or respect from guys when you're willing to kind of fight through some of that stuff? As a quarterback, right. um, you know, I'm not going to speak on, you know, what kind of respect quarterbacks get for, for not having um, played the position. I would say that when I would watch quarterbacks or have a quarterback that did those things that I um, probably respected them. I think that they have to be smart in this league. I think um, the way they lead, the way they try to prepare the team and try to get guys on the same page um, is another way that they earn respect, um, you know, throughout the week and the week and the way they play on on Sundays, um, you know, for the course of 60 minutes and good times and bad times, good plays, bad plays. Um, you know, they're, they're the ones that that have to lead the the offense. And I think in turn, you know, might rally the, the team with those runs with, with the record you guys have had since he's taken over with 10 touchdowns and 10 trips to the red zone has he taken on the mantle as well as you could have ever expected um i think ryan is um it's a unique situation and i was very aware of that i think coming in that having been a starter uh, in this league coming here learning an offense to try to um invest as much as he could to be ready uh, for the opportunity. Um, and he was, um, you know, and it's a fine line. I think that he was, you know, there were things that he probably, you know, wanted to say or, or do as, as a backup that he had normally done as a starter. Um, respect to the situation, you know, he probably didn't. And, and I think now that where he's at, um, you know, starting for us, it's it's been um, you know everything that we'd hoped for have him coming in to be ready to go to to assume that role and you know we have to continue to do those things we have to continue to work with receivers and, and linemen and understand where we're going to be in the pocket um, you know where receivers where we want guys when they're man coverage zone coverage um, but you know getting down in the red zone there's you know, there's been a lot of reps in a lot of these plays and. Our players are confident and comfortable in what we're doing. And when you can run it in, it makes it a little easier. Um, so again, that, that's, that's been a key for us to be able to score when we get down there and, and not kick field goals. They attempted five yesterday. Um, and again, thank God that we were able to, to keep them to, to field goals in those situations. Is there anything about this game that you think lends to the success in the red zone that you've had, whether it's man or just uh, personality, anything that lends I, mean, I think that we've we put a lot of time into it. We put a lot of work into it. Um, it's a focal point um, going back to April and training camp. Got a lot of reps at it on Friday. Um, 
hopefully we can get down there more um, and, and continue to to score. But that's been uh, been something that's been real positive for us. When Ryan first got here, given the experience he had as a start, was the pecking order always pretty clear still in your mind? You know, you had the one when you came in, it was obvious he was going to be the two. Yeah, I mean, I think that that's what, um, you know, the plan was. I think that that's just what we thought um, as coaches and, you know, John and I and everybody else, that this was going to be a, um, you know, a guy that, you know, if things happened or something happened, that he could, he could win us football games. And we've talked about that in the past. Um, you know, the opportunity presented itself to, to Ryan. Uh, you know, and Ryan probably, he probably figures he's only got so many more chances at it. You know, we even sit down and have this conversation, but you know, you know, you only get so many opportunities um, to go out there, and you know, it's good to see him take advantage of of what now is an opportunity for him. What went into the uh, decision to go on the fourth and seventeen near the end? Did you think about punting? What was sort of the, uh, the thought process there? You know, again, I, the the decisions that we try to make. Um, where I think that if it was outside of two minutes, you probably would have had a little bit more decision. A field goal, if they would have made it, would have kept it a one-score game. Um, the three timeouts, really that was it. It was the fact that it was um, the field goal would have kept it a one-score game. You know, really that's it's probably a different story um, if stopping them in three plays and a field goal makes it a you know, a two possession game in that field position, you got to bang it out of there and hope that somehow you get the ball back with, you know, a, a minute 20 and no timeouts um, and the ability still to win with a, with a touchdown. So I think that that's all it really was, was, you know, where are we at on the field? We're, you know, I, again, you were, I guess we're just kind of hoping, you know, for a huge play there, penalty somewhere down the field, and then um, holding them to just the field goal. And, and our guys, I think, I think the field goal block unit has put some pressure on teams uh, lately, and I think they snapped it quicker than, than they probably had wanted to. Um, and, and it forced them into a mistake. And, and, and we blocked an extra point last week. Dane and, and Josh are you know, excited about that unit and their role on that unit. Um, you know, on the missed extra point, um, you know, Isaiah Mack, you know, attacks the backside guard, um, shows up, gets penetration. The guy kind of throws him into the backfield. I don't know if the, you know, I don't know if Butker saw him, but I know that he was, you know, playing with the type of effort um, that we, we expect. Um, and, and it was what some people would consider a meaningless extra point. But I thought that there was great effort there, and that unit's been, um, been good for us. And what's the thinking on the, on the squid pick instead of going? Uh, I think that, you know, we're trying to get it down there um, probably a little farther, you know. Seeing where some of the kicks had landed into the wind uh, in that situation, you know, you want, it, uh, you want it to be down there a little further. So uh, we weren't going to be able to kick a touchback. And, uh, you know, just want to kick it down there a little further, kick it a little harder. Is, is the wind all that was working against Ryan in terms of touchback, or does he not have enough leg right here? No, I mean, I think that the wind was a large factor. I mean, I think going that way, um, there was returnable balls on both sides. And I think if you look coming the other way, um, we were able to put him a little deeper into the end zone, and, and certainly so was their kicker. But. Um, they just got to try to get it down there and kick it a little harder down there. I know you talked about the, the P.I. call being tough to overturn. Did you think about challenging the one on A.J.? A.J. on the fourth and 17 after seeing the game? Under two. Play. Under two, Jimmy. It's up, under two is on them. So they yeah, so I would have looked like a moron, and then you guys would be asking me, what dumbass challenge under two minutes? Did you, after watching it, do you think they Doesn't they matter. They Whether they, they're going to let them play under two minutes and let the guy up, I don't know. Not going to matter. So again, I, if that, you got to follow up to that one. I, 
I asked the guy next to me, did you see anything? Nah, not from here. I get, I'm sorry, it's only 60 feet. You know, maybe we, we, should, we should expect that they could see a little bit more than 20 yards. Is it as much, is it as much as the two-man defensive line that gives you played yesterday, and what's the sort of key to making that alignment work? I'm sorry, which person? The, the two-man defensive yeah. front. Is that as much as you've done of that? In a game. You, you mean just with the defensive linemen, yeah, the tackles, the and not the – yeah, I mean, it was just how we wanted to match up against their 11 and 12 personnel um, defenses, you know, as far as however we wanted to treat Kelsey, if you treat him as a, you know, a receiver, more of a receiving tight end. Um, I guess it just allows you when you play a four-down front, because I would consider that a four-down front and just – lump all the four defensive linemen together. It just brings you an extra um, DB into the game um, from where our base stuff was. It's, every week you kind of decide, I'm sorry, John, every week you kind of go in there and we decide how we're going to treat this tight end um, based on his ability, his skill set, and do you look at it more as a, um, you know, a, a receiving tight end or would you look at him more as a you know, a blocking tight end, and that's how we make the decision. Sorry, John. Sorry. Uh, what was David Long, in your mind, doing so well yesterday? I think uh, eight tackles and only 28 snaps with how late that production. He's an instinctive player, you know, and there's a lot of stuff that we got to continue to coach on him and prove, but he has shown um, since he's gotten here um, that he is an instinctive player, that he, that he makes tackles, that he gets around the football, um, got an opportunity to play. Um, and showed up, you know, got the ball out. So, you know, the thing, you know, you appreciate Dave. I mean, you coach him hard. You can, you can get on him and coach him hard. And, you know, he knows when he's out on the field that he's going he's gonna to go play. And, um, you know, it's just a young, instinctive player that has been improving uh, through the course of the season, you know, on the show team. Gives us a great look over there, him and Nigel Harris. Uh, and, and we've talked to him. We coach him. We watch those plays with him. That that's a, that's their opportunity to improve, to get a lot of um, you know reps just at the the run and a play action game and and diagnosing plays. Uh, we try to you know there's a card, but we try to win impossible. You know, me and Luke and you know Steckel and whoever's operating that that show team is to try to say, hey, this is our call. Like you know, just run it like that unless they need a specific look. So that's where they get a lot of their work and improvement. We've had some conversations about passing numbers, me pushing you, like, hey, what if you threw for 300? What if you threw for 400 once just for the heck of it? And you kind of saying, you know, it's not all it's cracked up to be. Is yesterday kind of an example of that, Mahomes? That's the most yards anybody's ever thrown for in that building and it turned out not to be all it's cracked up to be. It's just what you have to do every week, I think, to, um, to win the game. And, and again, everybody understands, starting with me and the team, um, that that's, that's not where you want to play that team. You know, you don't want to sit there and, and trade touchdowns with them and make it a 55-51 game. You go back and you look at the, the games that this, that, that Chiefs team has lost. The other team was running the ball 40 times, controlling it for 38 or 40 minutes. Um, and so when you try to come up with those keys and talk to the, the players about the plan, uh, ending drives on third down, defensively, um, sometimes it doesn't go that way. And we've always said, hey, we all want to start fast, Teresa. But when we don't, we don't quit and walk into the tunnel. We got to find ways to win. Um, so, you know, the biggest thing was that when they did have success moving the football, and I think the five field goal attempts, you know, was a, was a huge part of keeping that thing uh, <clears throat> close and giving us a chance at the end of the game. So, you know, when we had to, to get some stops, we did. And, um, you know, we can, we can play better. We can, we, there's a lot of things that we can do uh, that we have to do and we must do to improve. Um, but that was a huge uh, emphasis to be able to, to force them to kick field goals. What were you trying to tell Kalu as he was running past you at the end of the game? And, and the Just a fantastic play. You know, I think that you know, we'd have liked to have a little better. I know Josh would have liked to have a little better coverage on the, on the pass that got down there. But, uh, 
just always enjoyed guys that take pride in, in making a play to help their team win. And, uh, you know, Josh is primarily a special teams player for us and uh, got some action, you know, on a punt team. We felt like his performance in, in Carolina warranted that we find a spot for him. We found a spot for him as the wing on punt team. Um, you know, helped us get a little faster on the punt team. He, you know, we punted the ball great as usual. You know, Brett did a fantastic job. It's huge key. Um, 50 yard net punting to be able to, you know, eliminate, you know, Hardman or Hill if they got back there. So, and again, those guys that, you know, hopefully we're starting to build some confidence in, in, in a core group of, of special teams players. You know, Dane, you, you can't help but notice him seven or eight yards in front of everybody on the kickoffs. Uh, his effort, he gets doubled every single play on kickoff and on punts. You know, Milton had a huge tackle. On a, on a punt team, and these guys, these are names that people don't always see because, you know, the TV cameras cut off every special teams play. They never say who makes a tackle, but uh, you know, those guys are starting to form a little um, core group in there. And, and Batesy takes a takes a ton of pride uh, in everything that those guys do. You want to say the same same things and falling on the sword, but that, that's two weeks in a row you basically sacrificed a, a series to his penalties, what has to happen? You, you kind of said you can't teach him not to raise his hands into somebody's face mask, but something clearly has to change there with his mentality and his ability to fall into these habits. Where do you go from here? I don't know. I got a, I got a week to decide where we go. Your DBs Is there any way to explain just the number? I mean, a Pro Bowl guy like that, just the, the sheer number of penalties that he's... You guys, it will be open locker room as soon as you guys... Stop asking me questions. I'm sure he'll have plenty to say. So I, I don't know what to tell you. You talk about the confidence gained on the special teams. It, the, the way you guys have been able to get these three wins at home, late plays, and uh, final minutes, things like that, how much can that provide a boost when you do come off of the bye? Again, the more that you do something um, routinely, uh, the guys start to build some confidence. We've got a lot of work in these situations. Um, you know, I thought Arthur gave the guys a um, heck of an opportunity. Um, they were playing two-man, you know, which allowed for the scramble, which allowed for the nod to Ferk, you know, and then you know the middle field's wide open, and uh, same thing to Hump. So it was run, nod, nod, and uh, great plays by the two slot guys. You know, when we know when they play that, that, that it's tough sledding for the guys on the outside. Um, safeties are high and wide, but. Uh, we felt like we, we had a really good matchup in there with Ferk, and uh, who's done that. Same thing he did against the Jets last year. Same exact route, same exact coverage. Um, and so uh, you know, then we, we flipped it over and, and got it to Humph on the next play. How did you think Adore held up yesterday with a pretty tough assignment? You know, I think he finished. I think there were times where he competed. And we got to tackle better. We got to be more confident you know, in our ability to tackle. And, and you know, it's a great player you're playing against. Um, some technique issues that we'll continue to work on, but you know I felt like, um, especially down the field, he was he was competing and, and was competitive, and you know we'll, we'll need more of that every week. There's going to be good receivers and a good quarterback. You kind of said you said you had a week to decide on the line. I mean, is there any recourse? No, I'm not, I'm not, I was joking. Okay. It was the first joke I could come up with. Like I'm really <laughs> like I, I don't know what um, I'm going to stand up here and talk about with penalties or with Taylor, you know, we're not going to hide behind finishing. Um, I stand in here without this podium and I tell the team every week, if we're going to play full tilt to the tackle and we're going to finish longer than the guy with the ball, we can't use it as an excuse. And whether it's pushing a guy late or whether it's the quarterback, I can go back and, you know, vividly remember um, Harold in Atlanta rushing like heck to try to get to the quarterback. He throws it, Harold hits him, and the officials saw that as unnecessary. He's going as hard as he can. So we showed him, coached him up, explained, yep, it's a fine line to go and play full tilt to the tackle and understand you know, when you have to pull off. Um, Jarrell plays as hard as anybody on our football team, and he's going after um, Kyle Allen, and he slides. And unfortunately, Jarrell catches him with his knee in his back, and it's a penalty. It's forcible contact at a quarterback that's 
giving himself up. And I explained to him that we can't use that as an excuse by playing hard and just saying, you know, well, I'm just playing hard. Um, that would be no different than Taylor um, to say that I'm trying to finish. You know, that's, that's not what we coach. That's not what we teach. Um, and, and we can't say that I was just trying to finish. And, and, and he knows that, and I know that. You know, and, and it, it applies to everybody at every position. It's um, offensive line, it would be finished in their guy and then the whistle and then hitting them late or doing something like that. I explain with the rushers um, going as hard as they can and the quarterback doesn't have the ball or gives himself up. So there's a lot of instances um, where, where players are confronted with that, that playing with great effort uh, and then having to have the composure to, to not do anything after that and just go back to the next play. AJ ran over to Taylor <clears throat> after that, the bigger call kind of got in his face a little bit. Did you like seeing that? I, I, I love seeing when our players uh, hold each other accountable. You know, I don't know what was said, um, but anytime our, our players uh, trust each other enough to hold each other accountable, um, I think that that's a, that's a good thing. A win against a quality opponent like Kansas City. What, what did you learn about your team yesterday? Well, I always think that we're gritty, we're tough. Um, we, need, we need to play better, we need to execute better. Uh, but, but there is, I think sometimes the, the grittier and grimier it gets um, it is kind of where we like it and where it should be. Um, you know, there, there's just, um, you know, every week. Not every week, but when we win, sometimes one side helps the other side and somebody comes up with a huge play. Um, you know, it wasn't too long ago we were, you know, the offense this, the offense that, and uh, we got in the ball back and they, they, they did, some, did some pretty good things. Do you think it's fair to ask where some of this has been? Some of uh, what, the wins or the production? Or? The, big, the big plays? The, the production, the result? Well, I think the, the plays at the end of the game were, were dictated by, by their coverage. You know what I mean? They didn't play any snaps of two high safeties on, on first and 10. And so when we got the coverage, we took advantage of it. Um, you know, again, we, we have to run more plays. We have to be better on third down. I mean, it was, I would say that it probably wasn't easy to get Derek the number of carries he got yesterday based on where the game was going. I mean, we just we didn't run enough plays. It goes back to that. We got to run more plays. We average more, more yards per play than the, than the Kansas City Chiefs. So that would tell me that, again, you guys are the number experts, but you know, we got to run more plays. We got to find ways to, to continue drives and um, sustain them. So you know, we're going we're gonna to get back to work and, and get rested mentally and physically, and uh, and try to go win another game. You got Jarrell, uh, Delaney, Corey, and Jayon all missed. I mean, how much of the bye week help them? And are you optimistic that you get all four of those guys back at some point in the not so distant future? I'm not sure what not so distant future means. I'm worried about today. So if you're asking me if they'll be back today, Jack they won't be back today. Right. Don't interrupt. Don't interrupt me, Paul. Um, I would imagine that. They could probably um, look to get back, hopefully after the bye, and do some things, and then we'll evaluate where they are. Um, I know each and every one of them is, is working their tail off to get back out there uh, to help the team. And uh, you know, they'll, they'll be working hard this week to, to recover.